Hello and welcome to my tutorial where I'll be showing you how to use the Mac 7219 CNG, a handy LED display driver useful for controlling 7 segment numerical LEDs, dot matrices, bar graph displays or even just 64 individual LEDs. The Mac 7219 CNG works like other shift registers such as the common 74HC595 in that you need to enter data in a serial fashion, bit by bit with a total of 16 bits loaded at a time. Like other shift registers, it only uses 3 pins from the Arduino for data, latch and clock. It's also incredibly easy to use as well when combined with the LED control library from Arduino which allows you to do a range of other stuff. However, it is a common cathode driver and so it is intended for corresponding common cathode LED displays. LEDs are a lot of mini diodes. Like all diodes have two connecting pins, one called the anode and the other called the cathode. LEDs then, in a display, can be arranged in two different ways. For instance, in a common cathode display, all the cathodes or negative terminals of the LEDs in the display are connected directly together to ground or negative power supply. However, in a common anode display, all the anodes of the LEDs are connected directly together to the positive power supply. I'll be using a 4 digit 7 segment display, which is essentially 4 individual 7 segment displays combined into one package. On the back there are 12 pins, starting with pin 1 in the bottom left and moving along to pin 12 in the upper right. The schematic shows 4 comp or common cathode pins for each digit. These are pins 12, 9, 8, and 6. Each of those pins are connected to the cathodes of the 8 LEDs belonging to each digit, 4 common pins for 4 digits of 8 LEDs. The anodes of each of the 8 LEDs are marked by 8 pins, 11, 7, 4, 2, 1, 10, 5 and 3. Each of the 8 LEDs in each digit correlates with a letter, with one for decimal place. Therefore, by applying power to the right pins, the segments can display numbers. Finally, to set everything up, all you need is the chip itself, the 7 segment display, a resistor, an Arduino such as the UNO, and two capacitors. The capacitors are known as decoupling capacitors and are used to suppress noise signals introduced by the power supply lines. It's recommended to have both a 0.1 microfarad and a 10 microfarad capacitor. It's recommended to place both capacitors as close as possible to the power and ground pins of the chip where they're most effective. Setting everything up is just a matter of following the schematic for the chip. All that needs to be done is to hook up the signal pins, the 8 seg pins, the 4 comp pins, 5 volts and ground. The last thing to do is to choose a resistor value for the reset pin. Its job is to limit the current preventing damage to the chip and the LEDs from excessive currents. The two things that must be known before selecting a resistor value are the DC forward voltage and the DC forward current of the LEDs. With a forward current of 20 milliamps and a max forward voltage of 1.9 VDC, something close to a 28.0K ohm resistor would be ideal according to the table. The forward voltage is the voltage used by the LED when it's on. In a simple circuit with a 9 volt battery and an LED, you would need to have a resistor. The resistor is necessary because of Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the voltage supplied and the voltage used should always cancel. Therefore, the 9 volts supplied by the battery in the diagram should be used up entirely by the circuit, so both halves equal out. The LED on its own uses about 2 volts on average, but it's not even close to the 9 volts it needs to cancel. The remaining 7 volts then must be absorbed by a resistor. Using Ohm's law then, we can calculate the right resistor value. We know the voltage, 7 volts, and that most LEDs have a 20 mA forward current, so a 350 ohm resistor would be ideal. The resistor limits the amount of current reaching the LED and hence the brightness of the LED. By increasing the current, the LED will appear brighter, and by decreasing the current, the LED will appear dimmer. Now with everything wired up correctly, it's just a matter of plugging it in and loading some sample code. For my demo, I've created a simple battery counter program, but there's also plenty more to find online. This circuit could be easily modified to do a variety of other things. For instance, adding two or more indicator LEDs and a keypad and you'd have a rudimentary security system. 